hello 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 and welcome 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 everyone i pray everyone is having a fantastic day today how are you how are you how are you hey everyone welcome to thrive talks another episode we missed yes. you yes but we got a yes i know right we're gonna go for two hours today y'all. No, i'm just playing i'm just playing we can't do it we can't do it we can't do it we can't do it <laughs> but we're gonna try to pack in as much information and celebration and fun as we possibly can into today's show again i do apologize for last week some technical difficulties some weird audio stuff was going on i could hear everything but no one could hear me <laughs> i couldn't get i changed every setting mm, i someone put it in the, into the chat they were like michael we can't hear you so, you know, it was something with the settings, I guess. I don't know, but it's all resolved. We're not having that issue today. Praise God. Huh? So we are Say going something. to proceed. Mm-hmm. Speak it. You heard me. <laughs> How you knew I heard you? Because you're playing with me. You play too much. <laughs> We've been on this thing for a good 20, 30 minutes. If the audio was going to go out, it would have been out. What's going on, Morris? Love you too, brother. How are you? How are you? How are you? We got to see you soon. We got to see you soon. Yes. So going back to the banners, welcome back to Thrive Talks. Right. And today's topic of discussion, Black History Month. Know your heritage, know your worth. I like that. I really like it. Yes. Like I, that. thought so you me, I thought you would. I thought you would. Black history fact. What do you know about black history? And don't look at your notes. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Give me one off, well, the I, one off the top of my head. I was born October 25th, 1980. <laughs> that is a black history fact. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head, though, there were approximately 300 items that were derived from the peanut from George Washington Carver. Now, we don't know how many of those were actually patented by him, but 300, that's a lot of products. I'm curious to see what that product list actually is. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like peanuts. Peanut butter. That's all I can think about. (laughs) Peanut oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it doesn't go too much further than that for me. But to come up with 300 items. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, that's crazy. Like you can, brilliant. Like, can you that's, imagine? That sounds like all your life. In hmm. that time, in that time, for a black person to be able to have that much credibility and um, visibility when everything hmm. denied us. Yeah, that had to be just. I don't even know the word at the top of right now. Just torture and 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 oh, just I would be furious. And, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But he still had to get go to the back of the building to go into the uh, colored entrance and all that with all of that acclaim. He started right. the rights as another uh, group of people, the European based. Uh oh, phone ringing, phone ringing, phone ringing. Tell him you're calling back. How you know it's him? Lucky guess. <laughs> so what do we have going on this month hmm. oh a little bit of this and a little bit of that uh this month we will continue with our of course we'll have our weekly discussions we have some support groups going on at hq we have a new support group that will be launched this week or this month as well excuse me um also we will be returning to the office um that will be on a partial schedule though so just you know make sure you're calling in advance checking in with people to essentially schedule an appointment for any services that you need but we're trying to make the space available to people uh, again for those in-person support groups and those that need to come in for direct linkage to services so we are making ourselves available here this month uh aside from from that um so the new support group what is that going to be about it's actually like uh it's it's just it's a covid support group specifically like for those who have been directly impacted or someone that you love has been impacted by covid but just in a way that really focuses on the stress and the potential trauma that could be caused by what we're going through 
So it's just another way for us to offer, you know, a resource, a way to speak about, a way to express and kind of get those things off of your chest and then link you to the necessary resources to take that, you know, that assistance even further, whether it be some counseling referral or, you know, even if it is additional COVID tests or vaccination, vaccination education or link to the actual vaccination site, you know, we want to take care of all of those, um, all of those aspects. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're planning some. Oh my God, we've got some great stuff we're planning. Don't tease me. Don't please me. You gonna tell me or you just? Like, I don't like that. I don't. Uh-uh, don't be teasing me. Don't be teasing the brother. I want to get more facts first. I want to get all. I want to. I don't want to say it and then be like, "Yeah, I thought we was gonna be able to do it, but we can't." No, uh, I when I say something, I want to be able to just flow with it like y'all this is what we're doing this is when we're doing it this is how we're gonna do it y'all show up and show out you know how it goes so you know project innovate in the first cohort mm-hmm. uh ty yes. Valentino was one of the individuals and i think he mm-hmm. did a single uh yes of a song and yes so uh on february 23rd he's gonna be doing a cd release party he finishes his entire cd on the 23rd at mix okay. at between six and nine I'm really okay. excited about that to see how that project yes. you know, help people to kickstart their careers. And, and so um, yeah. I saw a photo of one of our members and I said, that photo is dope. And he said, oh, one of the guys from Project Innovate, who was a photographer, I think that was in last year's cohort, um, mm-hmm. did his photograph. So it's like an amazing initiative uh, that we have here at, at Thrive. Definitely, definitely. And it's like, I, I've seen a lot of the work that's come out of those projects and they're just, I'm like, there's brilliance there. Like I've seen some very great stuff and we look forward to working with them as well. Uh, I know that the photographer that you're speaking of, we are speaking to him about some photo shoots as well, because we want to get that, mm-hmm. that, that, you know, offer that we want to get that collaboration going. Like you have a skill that we need let's work together you know so like why not it makes perfect we sense interview. we should interview uh do a series or about the project innovate um recipients. i'd love that yes let's reach you out to jamel and make people. that happen yeah because that would be nice and that way it'd be a way to highlight each other be a show and, and try to follow their journey because they have mentors assigned to them to help them through the mm-hmm. process of entrepreneurial pursuit um and and so yeah that would be interesting to follow that yeah, let's see if we can make that happen in the current in the coming weeks. Mm-hmm. That would be nice. Yeah, we'll reach out and see what we can get scheduled with everyone. See if we can. I mean, I figure bottom line, what we could do is have them submit a short video and then we could review the video during the show if they can't actually make it on. But hopefully they can make it on during the hour. But that would be nice. It even would if, be. I agree. That, because that still would be a way to highlight them. And then we can go from the beginning and then follow them back up after they complete the seven month um, course. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. So next Thursday, actually I'm gonna be flying to Miami next Wednesday to to um, speak for Merck at, at the uh, organization. Remember I, I talked too soon the last time when I said it was gonna be last month. And then the, um, he, the brother was on the line. He said, oh, by the way, that's canceled. <laughs> I was like, you're going to do that to me on our talk well, show. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> so that's been rescheduled for next Wednesday evening. Uh, okay. So I'm not sure what time I'm coming back on Thursday. I might not be available. Maybe we could get a guest host, co-host for you. Okay. We'll work something out. Yeah. Let's discuss that after the show today so we can get something lined up. But you know what I'm going to get lined up? Maybe Morris is available. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see. Let's see. We're going to see what's <laughs> up. We're going to see what's up. That would yes, be a nice most thing. certainly. It would be. It would be. And he brings a, a, a joyful, just engaging, just <laughs> everything to the conversation. So I love it. Yeah. So did you know that um, Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American performer to win an Academy Award, uh, the film industry's highest honor for her portrayal of a loyal slave governess in what movie? 
what movie do you think that was? And then many people think, uh, before you say it, somebody else could tell us. Um, Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. Yeah, many people say that it was Halle Berry. You know, I heard mm -hmm. on Wendy Williams, they were talking about it and they were saying, yeah, Halle Berry was the you know, first and American African-American actress that won an Oscar. No, 1940, Hattie McDaniel, you know, and, and the only roles that we had back then were maids and butlers um, and that- Servants, type of essentially, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and look yeah. at how we have evolved or how, no, we haven't evolved. TV, the industry has evolved because we were always ready. We were always talented, mm -hmm. we were always giving it. We just didn't have access. Um, so right. did anyone respond to tell us who that person, what the name of the movie was? Gosh, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's a line from it, ain't it? <laughs> DC, he don't know what it is. He's old enough. <gasps> DC was around then. Oh. Well, DC, I was just saying hi. I didn't say none of that. that was... <laughs> yeah, offline. <laughs> uh, no, right. He about to get a message. <laughs> All right. So you can answer it since DC don't know. Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. Yes. A classic. I remember. Well, yeah, we watched that in school. I forget which Y'all class, did? but we did watch it in school. Yep. Wow. It might. It was either theater or English, one of the two. I think it was my theater class. We ended up watching that. Oh, yep. He answered. He heard you. <laughs> That's Leave him alone. He at work. He has stuff to do. He was trying to hey, get what, it in. What did he win? <laughs> you got something to give him? Oh. <laughs> You know, he always got to come back for me. He really do. He said I was his nanny. <laughs> <gasps> he said he didn't hear what I said. He said he did not hear what I said. <laughs> but he said I was his nanny. <laughs> too funny. That's too funny. Lord have I mercy. Just, I just can't. I, me either. Me either. <laughs> Let me go back over here to my banners because I have a couple of things that I have set up here. Um, ooh, we can do this one. So what's going on with the app? Yeah, the 365. There's been a lot of inquiry. Like people are interested. What y'all want to know? Mm -hmm. Y'all want to know about the app? Y'all want to know what's going on with the app? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's it All right, cool. Quick update. We are working on making the app what it needs to be, right? Originally, the way that we had the app set up, it wasn't quite as pleasing as it could have been. It wasn't as user friendly, interactive. It just wasn't, it wasn't what we wanted it to be. You know, so we took a lot of feedback from community, the different focus groups that we were having, a few other individuals that were invited into the app as well. We took all of that feedback from them and we're actually in the process of converting the app into its next iteration or its next phase of being. Um, so at this point, uh, we're looking at mid March, I believe, mid to late March. And at that point, what we'll do is start inviting people back into the app. But at that point, the app would be available, uh, at least we'll be on the way to making the app available on the app stores, the Google Play Store, the Android stores, the Apple stores, etc. cetera. Um, so that way it would be a, a full downloadable application mm -hmm. as opposed to the link that you had or may have seen before. So as of right now, everything is being transitioned over to that new app platform and at that point we'll go in and start rebuilding all of the stuff and once we have uh once we start approaching the date we'll put some more information out into the network because we do want to invite in a couple more groups to test it out give us their input and all that stuff let us know what's working what's not working and those are compensated surveys uh for those uh for you said those what? app studies i said those are compensated surveys for those app studies so be on the lookout for those there's essentially two ways to enter the app that's the first it's through the focus group where you get paid to do the surveys and the studies the other one is basically just uh immediate gratification like i just want to get in cool we can let you in. You can create a profile, explore all of that good stuff, and then just basically send some feedback to me or send your thoughts back to me. That'll be perfectly fine for that. 
Yes, but that's where we are. I don't have any images or anything to share with you yet, but as those become available, I'll definitely make those, uh, put those into the networks and out into the, uh, out onto our fan page as well. And that'll be good so that we can actually see it and, you know, we can mm-hmm. put the tutorial and, and all that on the show. That'll be another way to do Live that. demo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Most certainly, most about? certainly. Uh, let's see. I also have events. Now, you said that somebody was asking about word therapy. Yes. I want to know who. <laughs> a plethora of people. A plethora really? Of people. A plethora of people better show up next month then when we put it on the calendar. That's all I got to say. No, we had a nice turnout every time we've done it so far. I know. I was even the, uh, even the, I was owner, just... the owner of Mix was saying, oh, well, we missed the word therapy. They said it seemed like it really was you know, nice attendance. And the, the acts or the performers are amazing, amazing. That's what's oh, up. That's good to know. You wanted to was, uh, wasn't I? You, know, you did what? What was I that? did read a little poem. No, but what was the name of it? Tell me. Oh, speak softly to me. No, that wasn't it. Say another one. Um. No, it wasn't that. I just I just wrote one and that's the one that's on my head called and it's like I was in love, but I don't I haven't read that one out loud to anyone yet. Uh, I haven't performed that one. So, it was so deep. I loved it. I, I can't remember the thing of it. Maybe you'll think about it before. The one about the masks. Rainy yeah. Day Blues. Rainy Day Blues. That was the bomb. Rainy that, Day Blues. You did that very well. I like that one. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Speaking yeah, of Black you. History Month, I'm doing a Black History Month uh, event on February 25th. It's Friday at the Mix, and it's from seven to nine. I have dancers from NASM. I have okay. uh, Mark Zavian. I have Michael Ward is going to read something from Essex Hemphill or either James Baldwin. Um, okay. I have a couple of singers lined up already, um, so I'm still looking for other people to join in. It's the last Friday of the month. What? What? You joining that? I, I thought that was a <laughs> I thought I heard something. It was like a voluntelling lamb telling you. <laughs> you February twenty fifth. That this day. Day. <laughs> February twenty fifth, seven to nine. Let me look at my calendar. Seven Nick is doing the flyers now. So once I get the flyers done, um, I'll start posting. Um but they want to acknowledge, you know, the uh, contributions okay. of African Americans in the country, and so we're going to do it via literature, music, and dance. Okay. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I might get out there and dance a little bit too. But you know, I would like to see that because you keep talking this talk about you. You, you used to be a, a, a what do you call those people that do the break dancer? That's what you used to be. No. No. No, no, I had, no. I did hip hop, I did ballet, I did jazz, I did modern. Um, oh, so yeah. you were legit. I was doing that stuff, yeah. I was trying to get with Alvin Ailey and all of that stuff, and then things went awry, and I got antisocial and didn't want to deal with people, and it just mm-hmm. got real weird. You know, life. <laughs> yeah, I didn't process a few social uh, changes the way that I feel like I should have now in hindsight, rather, um, you know, if I would have stuck to my dreams and actually pursued those things, then I would have definitely pursued like some Alvin Ailey path. Um, but there was, you know, that goes down to that. That's the, it, it factors in like, for me, it factored in a lot of stigma and homophobia. Like I, I was getting it from my family. So it was like very that's discouraging. Okay because you were in dance yeah yeah and so it just it really it it really is wrong and you know Ellie, he became internationally uh, known because he was sponsored his company was sponsored by the state department to go Mm -hmm. overseas and tour and as a result he was able to start his own school and to this day you know many years later um his company is thriving and he was one of the individuals you know, now we talk about Black History, but also we just uh, we just celebrated African American um, HIV and AIDS awareness. He's one of the famous individuals that uh, lost his life because of uh, the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yes, most certainly, most certainly. And I'm um, looking at the calendar here. That first Wednesday in March is the second. Do we need to go ahead and start the ball rolling to make that our next word therapy? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. All right. I'll get everything cleared, and then we'll get some promo together for that. Because I think Silver Lining helps a week. Uh, they're going to do something in March. I'm not sure which day. I think. It's okay. Like Hopefully, there's no conflict. I'll double check though. I'll I'll get with a couple people and see, because um, it could be a collaborative opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely, we want to bring that. Uh, we want to give the people what they want. Because they are asking for it. They are asking for it. And you know we should. Um, did you ever uh, work on the video footage from the last one? Remember, we said we're going to take some clips and start promoting the clips. There's a lot of footage <laughs> between the cameras I have here and the cameras that um, Clifton has. Uh, right. He's got two sets, uh, two cameras rather. So there are like three or four different sets of footage to go through. So it's just getting it together. Yeah, but that um, we can look to get something like that out hopefully next week. Let me get with them and figure out how soon we could get something created. So someone um, mentioned to me the other day, they said that they like a lot of the topics that we, uh, you know, bring up here on the show. And and someone said that they would actually like to see something uh, around sex therapy. Um, mm -hmm. and Perfect. They'd be interested in, you know, really <laughs> analyzing and understanding the nuances around sexual addictions or sexual um, issues. And um, I heard that there was a gentleman that's located here in the Atlanta area who is a um, sex therapist. And so I think that we should probably uh, look into having him come on the show uh, and give us some insight, some guidance, uh, help us to navigate the issues and the conversation and the questions, queries uh, that people have. You know, many of us, you know, navigate through our own sexual identity and our own sexual proclivities and our own sexual nuances, uh, sometimes not understanding, you know, what they mean to us or how do they, how do they uh, affect us or how do they represent us? How do they show up? You know, what does it mean? You know, we get caught up in labels and things like that that sometimes have their own set of st a stigma attached to them or misunderstanding or mislabeling. Um, so I think that would be a, a great idea um, for us to do that. You just you see how you just abandon me and I'm just supposed to just be talking and talking and talking. So what do you, what do, what do you think about that idea? I'm sorry. I was trying to like, be like, hold on, I need a second. I'll be right back. But you were kind of going and I didn't want to stop you. So I was like, I'll just go and come back and then it'll be fine. You held it down. Next time I'll remove my little square all the way so it'll make you full screen. Um, but that's a beautiful idea. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we have um, a connection. We have a contact. Uh, I received an email from one of our coworkers, uh, Latanya. She's been on a panel with a gentleman. Uh, I don't want to say his name because I don't want to say it wrong. I have not heard him say it yet, um, mm -hmm. but I believe he is originally from overseas and he is a licensed sex therapist. Um, and as a matter of fact, I have his website pulled up so I can share. Oh, wow. Yes. One moment, please. <laughs> Cause a lot of the, the counseling sessions that we are in sex always comes up as a topic, a healthy sex, sex life starts here. Sex therapy for you with, Oh, I see what you're saying. Mikhail. Or maybe Michelle. Michelle, I believe is like a French way of saying Michael, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. He's a celebrity okay. psychosexual therapist. The services include complimentary consultations, couples counseling, sex coaching for individuals and couples, tantric sex coaching, psychosexual therapy, and training and development for businesses. So yeah. he's got, oh, I don't know why it's showing up like that. I'm sorry. What? Is it showing as red? Because it's not as white. No, I see white. Okay, so it's not showing up as a negative on that, like a negative type image. Okay. But yeah, so we're going to reach out and see what we can do to try to get him to come onto the oh, show. Yeah, that would be nice. Yes, I think that would be really cool. 
that's a stay tuned. Yes, yes. Please stay tuned. Now, looking at this, hold on, because 322 is Old School Wednesdays. Hmm. So there would be. Hmm. So can you do the ninth? What time? Potentially. I mean, generally, it was the first Wednesday, but I don't see why we couldn't do it on the second. But like I said, I just have to get my clearances because at one point we were told that all of the in-person events were to be put on hold. Uh, so yeah. I'm just waiting on the official release. But, you know, the, the old school people, they did approach me. Oh, there he go. Hey. What's he going on, Matthew? How are you? He was speaking to me. <laughs> he was speaking to both of us. No, it says, hey. No, when, he, when, he's, when he speaks to you, it's something about singing to the people. <laughs> so I need um, I need um, DC to do a flyer or you can help him with that for the old school night uh-huh you like why would you be helping old people that's how you're going with that that's how you roll it no no I was like they make flyers all the time they don't need me I mean I'm more than willing to help but I'm not you know I'm not gonna sit up here and act like people are disabled and stuff they, no, that's totally not the case like they've come up with some great flyers and promos and stuff and put out but I mean if you need my input my assistance by all means just reach out and let me know and then of course once they are you know once the creative is produced we'll do everything to push on all the platforms send it out in the community and all that good stuff we got another comment here. <laughs> Say you do the flyer. <laughs> See, he wants you to do it. No, he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> that he was talking to you. <laughs> how you know? I do what? <laughs> he he knows how to make flyers. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, all right. So let me see. What else do we have here? Um, oh, it's time for well, another, I don't have... another black history fact. Okay, what you got? So who was the first black woman to become a member of the United States House of Representatives? Oh, go back to my notes. No, 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 no. All I got to do is, all right, she ran for president. She's also the first woman to run for president. I give you another hint. She was a House of Representatives in New York. I don't know. DC News. <laughs> I bet he do. I bet he do. And I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. First one. <laughs> Shirley Chisholm. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be quick on your feet. Got to be quick on your feet. <laughs> oh, wait. We had some comments. Somebody might have beat me to it. Hold on. Let's see what they say. <laughs> and DC, I got you. I got you, bro. Yep, here we go. They had the answers. Hey, oh, but that, what's going on, sir? I didn't know you was in the room. That's what's up. Yes, yes. See, we got some knowledgeable, knowledgeable folks. Uh oh, as I throw my water bottle at myself. <laughs> So we, today we're talking about Black history. We're talking about uh, future topics for uh, shows. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about events that we have that are coming up now that we're coming out of lockdown in the next several weeks. That's what we have been discussing. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're going to have one of these. A COVID segment. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the fear is settling down the calming? That's a very interesting question because I think that as people have become essentially restless, mm -hmm. the fear has become less like in your face. Okay. Like I think people have potentially gotten to like, for me, I find myself having to check myself. Like you better put that mask on mm -hmm. because I'm just tired of wearing a mask. You know, so it's just like that fatigue that everyone talks about, that COVID fatigue. Like, I'm just over it. I'm just tired of it. Like, whatever. I think that that really has a lot to do with it. Um, a lot to do with people. But then at the same time, don't get me wrong. I've got some people who are like 
seriously afraid to do certain things because they don't want to catch COVID. So the fear is definitely real. I just think that it's being kind of battled or combated by the the whole fatigue element. Okay. So I um, talked to this guy. I just <laughs> so, <laughs> but he agrees that yes, less people are scared now. Um, and I don't in here. So oh, this, Madam CJ Walker. No, that's a millionaire. So this guy actually. What, wait, what did you say? Did you say billionaire? I said billionaire. I actually. Oh, spoke okay. Um, I was talking to him about having a show, and this is before his network really had evolved. Um, a friend of mine who had Cox Cable in Philly. Oh, James Robert Johnson. <laughs> and, and got my glasses on. I could see. <laughs> what, what company? Oh, uh, BET. Okay. And does he still he sold it in two thousand and one? Told you you gotta be quick on your feet. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> so That's what's up. Madam CJ Walker, did you know that she was born on a cotton um plantation in Louisiana? I saw that. I did see that as well. Isn't that something from humble beginnings? Uh, exactly. Exactly. Like, and that just leads to the whole, you know, don't let where you came from dictate where you're going. Let it motivate you forward let it right. you know give you some drive and some encouragement but don't let it limit you mm-hmm. you know don't let it restrict or 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 confine you from a from 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 um no, sure. what's the word i'm looking for Reaching pursuing out. pursuing your goals pursuing your dreams yes pursuing that's the word i was looking for <laughs> I, I saw a quote from someone the other day, and they they must have uh, reached fame at a, a later in their life. And their quote was, "A dream deferred is not a dream denied." A lot of times, right. you know, yeah. we think that because just because we, we can't have it today doesn't mean we can't have it. It's right. just maybe we get it tomorrow or the day after. Mm-hmm. Everything is due in its season. I'm a firm believer of that. So I've had to learn patience. We gotta learn. You know, it's things that we're not ready for. You know, um, they say you're not ready for that blessing. You gotta get prepared. You know, I'm not ready for my Maserati yet. How about that? Because you'd be spinning around town like a like a banshee. A fool. Like a fool. <laughs> a fool. <laughs> <laughs> what color would the Maserati be? <laughs> Probably red. <laughs> so you know that's all kinds of tickets and speeding and all and i'm just i'm not ready but you know i'm i'm I'm, in, I'm on the way i'm on the way my bucket in this car is a, is a bentley okay yeah those are nice those are really nice what basketball player joined the billionaires club wait we still in the covid segment go back go back go back i'm like my black hair straight only go 18 more days <laughs> All right, so what else do you about to say about COVID? We're gonna make this we're gonna make this black history a year. All right, so with regards to COVID, um, what's the news about the uh kits? Have we heard oh anything? I have not gotten an update on the actual kits. However, um what I can do is the information you can I believe it's through a website link. So I'll put the website link into the chat and if it's if it doesn't come through where you are, uh if you're inside of one of the groups, then contact me directly, michael at thriveSS.org. And what it is, is you would sign up on the website and they'll mail four kits directly to your house. So right now that's what we've been doing, having everybody sign up for that because it is free and through the United States Postal Service. Uh, and that's just as a, as a bridge until we can get some ordered and basically back in stock. And look, um, the other guys, um, or if you're on Medicare, um, you can get mm-hmm. eight kits for Medicare for free. That is awesome. Do you have the information for that by chance, or could you find it real quick? Because I'm going in to look up that uh, to get the email fee, okay. to get the website address for that. Yes, announced that on the other day. So let me pull that up. Um, 
Medicare, COVID test. You got to call. Apologize. I am actually in the process of posting something here. So oh. Biden's this administration will cover free over-the-counter COVID test kits through Medicare. No uh oh, somebody has a question for you. What's the question? Here you go. COVIDtest.gov. Oh, really? He going to go there? Gosh. It was, I don't know. <laughs> Did you say COVID test or COVID tests with an S dot com? Test with a lisp. <laughs> that doesn't help me. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm trying to get a people accurate information here. <laughs> All right, so one is special.ups.com slash test kits. That's the one that will send four free kits to any residential address, but it will Bessie only send Coleman four for a residential address. Hmm? Bessie Coleman. Uh, oh, okay, you found the answer. Okay. 1921 was the first black person to, black person to earn an international pilot's license. That's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. And here he is. He confirmed right her. there in the chat. DC knew her. <laughs> you know he used to work with Delta. <laughs> he flew with Bessie. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. I just do not know what to do with you. You bring this out. In <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> But yes, uh, and actually, let me add this as a banner so you all can see it. The COVID addresses for the kit. Ooh, y'all play too much. <laughs> y'all so funny. Morris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are my bats here? Let me see. I want to create a new one and we're going to add this right there. There you are. That's the web address to order the four free test kits through the United States Postal Service. Again, that's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash special dot USPS for United States Postal Service dot com slash test kits with an s and it's only i'll leave that up for just a moment only one box uh, for per household so like you can't order one and then your roommate order one it, it only send one one time. order per household correct yeah. one order per household so four tests per residential address yeah now if you break it up and put a and then you put b then hey i don't know how that's gonna work out but you know where there's yeah. a will there's a way people find ways to do things <laughs> Man, you know that house next to you is abandoned. Gone and have a cent there. <laughs> now you got eight. No, man, I mean, you know, work your magic, people. Work your magic. Get what you need. Get what you need. And you said that the other one I have. Hold on. What's this? Ooh. I'm not even going to put that up. What What did he say? It was DC, wasn't it? No, it was Morris, I think. What do you say? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Cause you know he just had his eighth baby, eighth baby. So he he need the Medicare one. <laughs> but Nick Cannon can afford to get his own, pay for his own. <laughs> So how old was Phyllis Wheatley when she became the first black female author published? Nathan, you told her, right? 
<laughs> I don't get this one. I'm confused on this one. Does she have a lot of children? Huh? Or a lot of does, does Kiki yeah, White have a lot of children? Kiki White has a lot, yes. And Nick okay. Nick Cannon has. I, well, I know Nick Cannon has a lot. Yeah. Um, she was thing. at the age of seven or eight. Wait, she was sold into slavery at eight. I don't know how old she was. Bingo! Here's your answer. Oh, so she wrote a book when she was in slavery, when we were not allowed to be able to read or write. That's how about amazing. that. That's amazing. Oh, because I know she was twelve, not ten, but twelve. But still. And really, yeah, we that's awesome. We are authors today. We not no many. comment. What? No comment. I was like, half these little bookers can't read or write anyhow. Which is a travesty, really. Literacy. But they don't well, I had a period that I worked inside of the school and the thing that I got was basically um Ain't nobody got time for that. School wasn't for the cool kids, like it was like, no, we got things to do in school, ain't it? Like, jeez, don't go to school. That's what one little dude told me. Jeez, don't go to school. <laughs> like, but you're seven. <laughs> oh, I didn't know she had ten kids. Oh yeah. Hey now. That's how she's able to hit those high notes for all them labor pains. Stretch your face. We're going to leave this up for just a little bit longer for anyone who has not been able to get the web address for the test kits. We want you to be able to get those in your possession. We also have a connection to the Carl Beam uh, Men's Health Clinic, direct connection for vaccinations. So if you are interested in more information about vaccinations or you're ready to go get vaccinated or you're ready for a booster shot, just feel free to reach out to me at michael at thriveSS.org and I'll put you into contact with them directly. Yeah, I'm about it? to put up my... That one? The Carl Bean. Where is, where is that? That's here in Atlanta? It is in Atlanta. Yes, yes, yes. They're, it's a spinoff of, uh, I believe they're affiliated, well, they're affiliated with NASM. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have some um, direct connection to free vaccinations and all that good stuff. So speaking of NASM, are they still in um, partnership with you guys as far as doing um, HIV and STI testings? At, uh, at the uh, head, at headquarters? Well, because we had gone virtual, we had to stop that for a moment. So we're, we're reaching out to them to, re to resume that as soon as possible. So hopefully within the next week or so, we'll be able to invite them back into the space. But we have to get everything uh, uh, operationalized, essentially. But you know what I like about that? And I just want to speak about that for a minute. Like a lot of individuals who have STIs specifically, um, really don't like going to the health department you know um yeah. some, some don't even really want to go to their private doctors um to find out that type of information because they're embarrassed you know so yeah. i think that to have those types of tests in um non-traditional settings you know provide mm -hmm. another level of comfort and um privacy um so that they can find out what their um whether or not they have it or not but at right. least they don't yeah. It's in a non-stigmatized um, location. You know, so to yeah. come drive, uh, you could be coming to drive for anything. You know, no one would think that you're coming. You could be coming up there to wash your clothes. We got washing and dryer facilities in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell yeah, them you're coming to use the business right. center. Just come on and use the business center and stop by and get your little test real quick and go on about your day. And keep it moving. You know, yeah. It's important to know your status, and status is just not HIV. Syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, you know, COVID. All Hey, bringing that right back around to it, yeah. You got to know your status with anything. You know, if you're going to deal with anything, you have to know what's going on. So mm -hmm. know your status, definitely. And so many times we just don't want to know. We, we want to wait until you know it's the last minute to get treated. Um, but prevention. But it's that fear happen. that you were talking about, you know, not wanting to go to those traditional settings, not wanting to see the look on that other person's face, then judging you for something that, like, wait, hold on, I'm just a human being that's here for something that's just a human issue, a right. human occurrence. Like, stop yeah, dealing with me. Like, I just, like, I just tried to end the world. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm the one sitting here with, the, with the stuff. Like, don't play with me. <laughs> you looking at me cross, and I'm the one sitting here with the. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and a whole nother layer of uh, angst that you don't need. You're already feeling some type True. of way because you're in a situation. Exactly. You know? Exactly. 
Exactly. And that's one of the things that we try to work on communicating back to providers, you know, that that interaction that, you know, even your facial expressions matter, your body language, your choice of words, you know, that's that cultural sensitivity. That's you being that being trauma informed, like, you know, people have hurt associated with those things. And for you to come behind it and add this layer of judgment and shame, that's just not. It's going to discourage them from coming back the next time. Exactly. You know, Alexa, thank you. What's she doing? She was reminding me of a meeting, but now she done messed up because she changed my music. Alexa, stop. The other day I told Siri, so my sister's name is Rose Townsend, right? But I call her Rosie. So I, I said, uh, Siri, call Rosie. And then I thought about it. And I said, oh, Siri, call Rose Townsend. So Siri said, which one you want? I can only call one at a time. <laughs> I started to kick her ass. <laughs> like, I'm going to drop you in some water. Keep on talking. <laughs> and another time, I said, Siri. Can you swim, said, Siri? Can you swim? <laughs> I said, hey, Siri. She said, huh? I said, <laughs> Huh? You don't know me that well. That's what mine says. He says, huh? I changed mine to a guy. What's your guy name? He, it's still Siri, but he's just a boy. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> Is he a boy or a man? He's a man. And he he's an a, Australian he, man. I never say he has a British accent kind of, yeah. Australian. Aussie. Sometimes I yeah. get him. But I heard it. Huh. Really? It's so casual. I said, you don't know me like that. My, what does he know? He doesn't say, huh? He'd be like, mm hmm. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, Siri. He didn't do it. Hey, Siri. <laughs> you hear him? What'd he say? He said, mm hmm. He said, uh huh. Is there something else I can help with? That's him. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Siri. Could you try again? That's it, Siri. Thank you. all i need my life is complete look you don't have an to be you. i got an australian yeah. man at my side whose aim is to please <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you be smiling all the time <laughs> you got it's anything jesus. In the chat? It's jesus. do we have anything in the chat? uh no no not at the moment not at the moment it looks like we've got about 12 and a half minutes left in the show. I'm so going to take this asking, down and put this one what back. What kind of shows would you like us to um, conversation <clears throat> you like us to have? You know, give us some ideas about the topics that you'd like to hear. And um, we'll get the necessary individuals aligned with the show topics so that we can have a, a professional uh, conversation. Uh, like I said, we, we're talking to... Uh, the time you know, to get that contact information mm -hmm. sex therapist yes we also mentioned about the uh, the man the professor out in california who did that COVID training for us mm. uh, yeah we need to read out to him uh dr stefan e wallace yeah he was amazing he really broke down um all of the misinformation about COVID and the proper information about the vaccine so that would be good to have him on. Absolutely. Yeah. If you can remind me to reach out to him, I'll be sure to send an email if you haven't already. I will remind you. Okay. Thank you. And then we want to bring the staff of Thrive back on because we've had added some more new staff. Mm -hmm. So we Yep, most to certainly. Them. So we're gonna have uh the staff um cycle through, introduce themselves, do a little uh meet and greet welcome and meet and greet kind of thing. So that'll be one of the shows within the upcoming three to four weeks as well. Um, and then you said next week you'll actually be out. So I'll be looking for a co-host. So y'all stay tuned. See who that's going to be. I think Matthew should do it. He's been on every show. Matthew ain't coming on. He'll say comments, but I don't think he's going to come on. We'll see, though. He's just we'll saying. See. He's just saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's we'll see how that goes. My request. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us know what you think about that. Only do it. <laughs> Won't he? Lord have mercy. 
All right. And if you could hold it down for two more seconds, I'll be right back. All right. So I guess I got to go back to my black history facts. Black history facts. Okay. Um, and see what we can, who knows some of this stuff. And now I got to find it. He runs away like that. Here we go. So the first lawyer, how about this? John Mercer Langston was the first black man to become who passed the bar in Ohio. Guess what year? It was actually 100 years before I was born when he was elected to the post of town clerk for Brown Helm, Ohio. This was in 1854. 1854, he passed the bar and became a town clerk in 1855, one year later. And so this is during slavery because slavery wasn't abolished yet um, and uh, became one of the first African-Americans ever elected to public office in America. John Merster Langston was also, oh, wow, the great uncle of Langston Hughes famed poet of the Harlem Renaissance. That's amazing. So that's probably where um, Langston got, Hughes got his first name from his uncle, great, great uncle. Wow, Langston Hughes. That's amazing. Did you? Oh, it is. Yes. But all this in times when we were like, that's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. that it is. During a time they're telling us we weren't nothing. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do nothing, couldn't be nothing. They still couldn't keep us down because we still were rising to the top. That is awesome. So Tuesday, Darion has his uh, peer support group. Mm -hmm. so yes, like absolutely. And I think they're going to be returning to the building. So um, be on the lookout for an update from that group as well. Mm -hmm so that they can hold those sessions in session in person. <laughs> right. And then we have group counseling tomorrow, 630. Is that tomorrow or tonight? Oh, today is Thursday. Wow. Gosh, it it is. It is. it is. I forgot we used to do Wednesday. So um, yeah, tonight at 630. Mm -hmm. And I think we're talking about fetishes. Mm, I may oh, have to I join that one. <laughs> Get a rope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bring your own bring your own swag. <laughs> right, bring your own bag. Yes, most certainly. That's what's up. That's what's up. So looking back, we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do this, whether it's gonna be the second or the ninth for the next word therapy. Um, I don't want to do anything that's going to conflict with other mm -hmm. departments and other events and stuff, you know, especially if it's something that's open to the community and everybody's invited. Um, but I, like I said, I just have to make a few calls and figure out some details and then we'll get something on the calendar. I'll create the event. We'll get a creative little flyer done and start sending that out to everybody in the network and the community. Mm -hmm. And... But the civil line, they, they need to uh, hold space because they're going to have uh, house music dancing. Oh, you talking about for word therapy? No, for their day, for the second. For their, for the, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. Now, if I was going to offer it, it would have been offered at Mix, so it wouldn't have been in the same location. Huh? Never mind. We'll work out all the details and then we'll update the people. I don't want to confuse anybody. They said it was something going on, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> oh, but you can, you can um, get me all mixed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Check out Abraham Galloway. Oh, gosh. Abraham Galloway. I actually saw that name earlier. I don't remember what he did. Let me just check. Abraham Galloway. Civil War. He has been compared to James Bond and Malcolm X, 
through his name oh. has largely been left out of the history books. He was what? an African-American who escaped enslavement in North Carolina, became a Union spy during the Civil War, and recruited Black soldiers to fight with the North. That's the short version. The fuller picture would include his work as a revolutionary and being one of the first African-Americans elected, wow, to the North Carolina Senate. And I never hmm. heard of him. Right. Abraham. James Bond. Black yeah. James Bond. What? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All wrapped up into one. He was a spy and, an ab you know, abolitionist. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, we're going to have to post some more info on him. And there was a book written about him, The Fire of Freedom. The Fire of Freedom. Okay. By David Sisewski. Um, calls him a swashbuckling figure who wouldn't take sass from Northern or Southern or Black or White Union or Confederate. So he mm -hmm. was his own man. Right. Abraham. Like, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to stand for it, regardless of the source. I'm not going to stand right for is it. Right and wrong is wrong. He was a right. man. <laughs> Thank you, I Lisa promise to sound like you said white is right, but I, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Oh, he said right, right, is right. right is right, and gotcha. wrong is wrong. Is wrong. Yes, yeah. it is. It is, and you have to have that integrity to be able yeah. to stand. Yeah. So as we bring our show to a close, what what do you have for the lovely people? Now it's time to say goodbye. So glad we had this time together. <laughs> I don't know that song. Who was that song? <laughs> it was from a show. I just said I don't know that song. Carol Burnett. Oh, wow. Show. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember the theme song to that one. I remember the show, but I don't remember the theme song. Uh, I, gave me, I thought you were going to say you don't even know who she is. I do. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, wait, now, was it her or was it somebody on her show that played Mama on Mama's Family? Somebody on her show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I used to watch that all the time. Mama's Family, that show was crazy. It was. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, Naomi, but. <laughs> she was like the white uh, Medea. <laughs> Very much so. Her posture and everything was. <laughs> same dress and everything, same yeah. gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure. I thank you all for joining us. We're going to go ahead and get ready to get off of the air here. Unless anyone has anything else to say in the comments before we go. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm looking. I don't see anything. I want to thank I'm DC. Give I'll give him a couple minutes. Yes. Thank you, DC. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Matthew. I'm trying to see if I'm missing anybody else here. That is. Yes, yeah, so, but that is. He did jump in and join us. I hope he's still on. I know we've got four viewers, but I can't tell who they are. Wow, we got four million, you said? <laughs> yeah, four million. You know, we global at this point. You know, Just about four million views. <laughs> New comments. All right, here we are. Morris, that's good day. Good day to you too, Morris. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. I'm starving. Well, time to get something to eat. It is. It really is. Yeah, I think I'm going to have some chicken noodle soup. I actually was thinking about chicken rice. That's what I got downstairs, a, a giant can. I, I used to eat chicken noodle when I was a kid every time I was sick. Mm. Was oh, good. no. You know what? I got some chicken tortilla soup. I might eat that one. I've been craving chicken tortilla soup. It's just so good. Who is that by? Is that in Campbell's? It's Progresso. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, I got to go and pick a friend from the hospital so that I'm not even going to be able to eat yet. Okay, okay. Well, I hope everything's okay. Oh, yeah, he's just there for a checkup. Okay, okay. Go checkups are good. Preventive medicine is good. It is, it is, it is. Yes, yes, yes. Keep that heart healthy. And I just want to say, I want to find out where you get those glasses like that. The asymmetrical look, that is the bomb. <laughs> we, we really put a, a new meaning to side eye. <laughs> That's like the futuristic. 
<laughs> it broke off. I tried to glue it back on. I tried to tape it back on. I tried to do everything, but I cannot get it to stay on. So I have to take it in. Huh? Uh-uh. The way that it's broke? Uh-uh. No. It's, I have to take it back to the people and have them fix it. So we'll do that. All right. It's All right. Been- well, have a great day. You as well. Peace. It's been real. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace out. Bye. See you next week. Yeah.